come outside and just see all the greyness of Dublin, I thought, gosh, is this really any different from prison? You know, there wasn't this great sense of freedom upon me, you know, because coming outside, I had to sacrifice my freedom, because I, at present, like, I'm not allowed to go here where you're interviewing me now. And if I get caught being here, I'll face six months in the jail. So that's not freedom, because this is a nature reserve. For over uh, two years, an environmental campaign in County Wicklow has dominated national headlines. The battle between the Glen of the Downs protesters and Wicklow County Council over a road widening scheme. We came down here to, to highlight the problems uh, with building a Class B Euro route through one of the most beautiful pieces of land that Ireland has to offer. This is not a new road. This is an existing road that we're widening. This is already happening in the Glen of the Downs. The plan is to get a major network from Ross Lair to Belfast, recognising that as a small country, we have to export our dye. I just had a fucking tree fall on my hand. I thought I had a tree fall his leg. On one side, you've got nature. You have a nature reserve protected by law. And then you have cars, transportation policy, and generally short-sighted, unsustainable systems. And the two have come to clash in this beautiful place. For 22 years, I'd been involved in the tree business, mainly as a tree surgeon, and even broader than that, as a certain amount of consultancy. So most of my work, work in life, has been either trying to adjust trees to suit people, or trying to adjust people's heads to suit the trees. In relation to the Glen of the Downs, it's becoming evident now that it's a commuter problem, and that it's not going to be solved by widening this road. This road will get people to the traffic jam quicker. You must remember that this road was, uh, in its present state, was completed in 1970. Now, 30 years later, we have to widen it. And that's the way it's going to go in this country. We're going to have to build more roads. We're going to have to widen them all. Um, is that the way to go? Is that sustainability? The answer is no. Under the Wildlife Act of 1976, the Glen of the Downs became Ireland's first nature reserve. The Wildlife Act was put in place to protect special areas of conservation from development by law. The Glen of the Downs has been there for 5,000 years. It's the oldest piece of natural heritage in the county. It's a, what you call it, an alluvial rainforest that was formed by rivers from the melting of the ice caps in the last ice age. It's mainly made up of native oak, which originally covered a large part of the country, and now there's very few remnants of it left. Mm. 
My name is Charles McNamara. I'm a senior executive engineer with Wicklow County Council. I'm responsible for the N11 road and the Glen of the Downs to Kilmac project in particular. The council decided over 10 years ago, based on the traffic figures, that the road needed to be widened. In 1990, Wicklow County Council put forth the original design for the road widening in the Glen of the Downs. From the very, very beginning, when this project was uh, promoted, uh, it was very evident that the designers of the project hadn't a clue about the integration of trees and development. Uh, the first design was so appalling, so desperately bad. Uh, to say it was insensitive to the environment would be almost to give it a compliment. We, the residents of Glenda Downs, objected to what the, what the council were going to do in Glenda the Downs. They were going in and taking a good bit of the reserve and the stream that we have down there. The government body that owns and cares for the nature reserves in Ireland is called Dukas. Dukas would not accept Wicklow County Council's proposal and suggested modifying the road design. We advised them to push it as far as the, uh, west as they could because it's a beech wood on the left, uh, left which is not a native species and which we would, wouldn't consider to be um, an ecologically important species. In 1994, Wicklow County Council produced a new design for the road called the Western Alignment. This new design required cutting into the west side of the valley in order to preserve the stream and the native woodland on the east side. Without doubt, the eastern side is the most ecologically important. But on the other hand, the western side is the most important in landscape terms. So really, they were offering the choice of, look, we're either going to do a lot of ecological damage or we're going to do a lot of landscape damage. Now, as it happened, uh, we're going to get both. Dukas, the National Heritage Service, accepted the proposal for the Western Alignment. In 1997, Dukas sold a portion of the nature reserve to Wicklow County Council, even though no final design for the road was agreed upon. This land belongs to the Irish people, not to any government bodies, or local councils, or caretakers such as Dukas. I remember driving through the Glen when the final permission came through, thinking, shit, we really, we really hadn't fought for this place. I mean, I don't mind it going, but I wanted to go down with a decent fight, you know? And then I saw a little blue tent in the, in the woods. In 1997, an international group of anti-road protesters began occupying the Glen of the Downs Nature Reserve. I'm actually one of the original people who went down to the Glen of the Downs. It's part of our heritage, it's part of our culture. It's also necessary to our survival to maintain our environment. We started going down in, in just in tents at first, spending a couple of days there when we could. And then within a week, there were more tents and then tree houses beginning to go up. The whole thing began to get bigger and bigger. And of course, it was a great uh, novelty for the media because this was the first time it really happened. We stay here as long as we can. Um, I don't know how long that's going to be, but just as long as we can. I would presume until, we prob until most people probably end up going to jail. But a lot of people started coming down and coming from all over the world. And within three or four months, we had about maybe 20 or 30 people living in the Glen. I signed a petition and started sending a few pounds every week out of my wages. And eventually I came down and uh, pretty much stayed. Slowly but surely we built a treehouse here, a treehouse there 
And so some of the tree houses became quite elaborate and quite comfortable. My brother actually came down to visit a friend of his that was living here and um, I was ordered to come collect him because he wasn't supposed to be here. And uh, I came down and I looked around and stayed for the day and just met loads of people. And then I couldn't get this place out of my head for a month. I was just constantly thinking, right, I gotta go live there. <laughs> There's no two ways about it, I, it's, I gotta go. The eco warriors to me, they were just jumping on a bandwagon as I would call it. Uh, in my young days, we had um, people uh, that protested in certain ways. We called them the hippies. Well, to me, they were, <laughs> they are a certain style of hippies. This world isn't yours, but to do as you please. Today from your holy horse, tomorrow on your knees. You'll be begging for forgiveness, you'll be praying for your soul. Well, don't leave it too late, man, you'll be dating with a hole. In 1998, two Dublin-based environmental lawyers researched Wicklow County Council's road plan and discovered problems with the design and planning for the road. The biggest impact we, were, we thought was that if they made a cut into the western side of the mountain, that the water table would be affected uh, in two ways. Uh, one is that there might be a drop in the water table in a year of drought, and you could get, because of the cut, you get a quicker flow of water off the hill and therefore you could get mass debt of trees. The other possibility was that the road would cut off the groundwater that feeds the east side of the valley and wipe out the rare woodland that the new design was intended to preserve. Without having agreed on a design for the road, the validity of Wicklow County Council's environmental impact statement was left open to scrutiny. First of all, they never did the hydrological studies. They never actually did the type of drilling in the way it should be done to get this data. It was carried out over, I think it was four months on a particularly dry year and should have been carried out, in their opinion, over at least 12 months on a, on a year of at least average rainfall. And that was never done. The lawyers went to the Dublin High Court to request a judicial review of the road plan. Minutes before the hearing took place, a concerned scientist handed two illustrations to the lawyers. The first illustration showed the potential impact that the road would have on the landscape and the water table. The second illustration included a description of the history of the glen. At the end of the 18th century, the glen was deliberately shaped by one of the first landscape architects of the early picturesque movement. The judge granted a full judicial review of the road plan and ruled that no further work could be carried out in the glen until the review took place. Wicklow County Council just really had no answers, you know? And they were running off at dinner or trying to redesign the road and coming back with scraps of paper saying, well, until so the judge more or less said, look, you know, I'm really tired of just redesigning this road. And we thought, we, we thought, that's it, we have them on the floor on the environmental issues. And they were on the floor. But what happened in his judgment, he uh, turned around and said, well, there was a statutory delay in challenging the EIS legally. Therefore, he wasn't going to take the environmental arguments into consideration. And that just, whoomp, wiped out five days of the case. The court said that any evidence that we had couldn't be accepted. And that's a shame because it doesn't negate the fact that we have scientific evidence that says that the road planned is ultimately flawed. In 1999, the High Court ruled that Wicklow County Council could proceed with the road widening scheme. When one talks about cutting trees in the nature reserve, trees can be cut anywhere. Uh, providing 